Hello everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sachin Isaria and in this video we will be discussing about some of the frequently asked the question on rule 11g. So guys previously I have uploaded one video in rule 11g where I had discussed about uh, the basics uh, uh, information about rule g what is the auditor responsibility what is the responsibility of a management and some of the practical challenges. Now, in our today's video, we will be discussing about some of the FAQs, uh, which is related to Rule 11G. I am also making one more video on SAP, where I would be uh, discussing how to do the audit of Rule 11G in the SAP application. So that video is in line. Uh, so maybe in a couple of days, I would be releasing that video as well. So without wasting much of your time, let's start our video. So first question is, is there any exemption to small and medium companies from complying the requirement of maintaining a books of account in accounting software with audit trail feature? So here the uh, question is asking like uh, whether rule 11G is not applicable to small or medium company. So the answer is guys, it is applicable to all the companies and there is no exemption given to the small or medium company. So irrespective of the size, irrespective of the nature of a business, if you are uh, registered in the Companies Act, you need to comply with the Rule 11G and you need to maintain your books of account. Uh, 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 if you are maintaining a books of account in electronical mode, so that software should have an audit trail feature as per the Rule 11G. Second question, guys. Required to report on audit trail feature is in the limited review report. So basically, like as a, a statutory auditor, whenever you are doing a limited review, uh, uh, at the time also like uh, statutory auditor have to comment on this uh, rule 11G. So presently there is no requirement prescribed under the companies at 2013. Okay. So basically while doing a limited review, you need not to comment on the audit trail feature. Okay. While issuing their limited review report on the limited uh, review of the financial result of a listed company. So the, as of now, there is no requirement as such to report on an audit trail while doing a limited review. So this is the second question. Now, next question is, what is the reporting implication for the auditor? In case of absence of audit trail in accounting software, which doesn't allow the subsequent modification to transaction general entries posted initially. So guys, like when you will do audit, you will also see this, that client is saying that in my application, there is no option to modify any transaction. So if this option is not there, uh, whether audit trail will still required guys. So guys, irrespective of the fact whether the general entry could be edited or not, audit trail feature should be required. Okay. So if client is saying that in my ERP application, there is no feature to change any transaction irrespective of that audit trail will be required. Okay, guys. So this is the FAQ and these are the answers. So basically in this video, we are just discussing a frequently asked questions. So after this guidelines, a lot of people have a lot of queries and a lot of doubt. So we are just discussing their questions and what is the answer of those questions. Okay. So this is this. Now next question is, if during any part of a financial year, company encounters any technical glitch due to which audit trail feature remain non-functional or not able to function properly. Now, what will you do as an auditor? Suppose if you are doing an audit and company saying that due to some technical glitch or due to some other uh, reason, the audit trail feature was not uh, uh, enabled for so and so period. See guys, so if audit trail remain, audit trail feature remains non-functional for any part of the year, focus on this word, any part of the year, as an auditor, you need to modify your report. Okay, for you, it is a non-compliance, even if it is for one day. So as an auditor, when you are giving your report, you, you just highlight the period for which the audit trail was not uh, uh, configured or what's not functioning properly and accordingly modify your report, okay, under the rule 11G. Now, next question, can I uh, auditor use an IT expert or specialist while auditing and reporting on an audit trail feature? So guys, sometimes like, you know, the uh, people who are doing a statutory audit, they are from a CA background, they are from the finance background. 
sometimes sometimes uh, companies doesn't have a enough manpower or i would say a technical people to verify the compliance of audit trail in that case can those company appoint an it expert and can they rely on their report so basically the guideline is saying yes you can involve the specialist or expert who are expert in the field of information technology okay so you may hire any firm or you may hire me as well uh, if you want to uh, like you know uh, verify the compliance of rule 11g so basically you can hire an it expert and that it expert will do the evaluation and that it expert will provide you a report when you are using the work of uh, external uh, party or external ex uh, uh, expert you need to make sure that you are complying with sa620 okay because it is a ultimately responsibility of a statutory auditor to comment whether the audit trail feature was there and whether it was working throughout the year or not so you can engage an it expert and then use the sa620 uh, to check the work of auditor uh, auditors expert okay guys now next question is implication of audit trail feature not operational throughout the year or how can an auditor ensure that audit trail feature was enabled throughout the financial year without any interruption so guys if audit trail feature is not operational for a single day or for any period of time you need to modify your report this we have discussed earlier as well okay <clears throat> on the basis of the above guideline it can be said that the primary responsibility of management is to maintain a books of account uh, which has a audit trail feature enabled throughout the financial year in order to demonstrate that the auditor uh, audit trail feature was functional and operated and was not disabled management needs to design and implement a specific internal control environment okay and for the absence of transaction during any part of the year will not be considered as a reason for not enabling the audit uh, feature sometime what will happen client may uh, uh, tell you that uh, uh, no transaction was conducted during the year hence audit trail was not enabled now this could not be a reason of not enabling the audit trail if there is no transaction in the financial year then also the audit trail feature will still required okay guys this feature will be required irrespective of the fact whether there was a transaction or whether there was not any transaction okay in case books of accounts are not maintained in accounting software having an audit trail or audit trail feature non functional during the any part of the year auditor accordingly need to modify the report and in the upcoming slide i will also show you how how you need to write that modification okay guys so this is about this question now in this uh, they have not answered this one how can auditor ensure that auditor audit trail feature was enabled throughout the financial year without any interruption so in this case what you need to do is first you need to ask who have an access who has an who has a access to enable or disable the audit trail feature enable or disable the audit trail feature okay suppose if one person have an access to disable the audit trail feature then what will you do you will ask the user activity log of that user whether that user have disabled the audit uh, uh, trail or audit log or not user activity log you need to check then only you can comment okay that audit trail feature was not disabled during the financial year and there was one more requirement in this uh, rule 11g that <clears throat> audit software should not have a feature on the uh, another side in the manager management responsibility para he, they have clearly written that accounting software should not have a feature should not have a feature to disable the audit trail so on one side they are saying that accounting software should not have a feature to disable the audit trail if the accounting software have a feature to disable the audit trail as an auditor you need to make sure that it it was not disabled during the entire financial year so how will you check this first you ask who has an access to enable or disable and once you get that list that okay this two person or one person have an access check their activity log whether they have disabled the logs or not okay guys this is what you need to do here next question if during the audit auditor assess that the general it controls are not present so this is a itgc control or gitc control 
if those are not present this controls not effective should auditor rely on the audit trail feature on the accounting software see guys uh, uh, like uh, audit trail basically is a part of uh, one of an itgc control correct log management so suppose if you are uh, checking the itgc control report and there you noted that some of the controls are not effective then what you need to do is you need to assess the risk what is the risk of that particular area on the audit trail configuration okay so suppose if user access control is weak so you need to check what is an impact of those user access control in audit trail configuration and accordingly highlight the risk and check uh, uh, whether uh, whether to modify the report or whether to not to modify a report so accordingly you need to take a call here but yes as an uh, uh, as a statutory auditor obviously you can ask for a itgc audit report in itgc audit report you can see how many observations are there and what is their implication on the audit trail? Okay, guys, this is what you need to do here. Next question, can auditor rely on an independent information system audit report of service organization? So guys, there is one concept which is called as a SOC. So guys, SOC is what system organization control. A lot of companies are doing an SOC audit for uh, all their uh, uh, customers. So basically what is SOC? For that, I have already uploaded a video. So I will provide you that link in the comment section. You can watch that video. It will give you a decent idea what is a SOC or what is the use of a SOC. So just check out that video. So in this question, what they are saying is that uh, can a statutory auditor rely on a SOC to report or not? So guys, SOC to audit report auditor can rely only if your SOC report is including a para that in this report, the auditor have also verified the compliance related to audit trail as per companies at 2013 or rule 11G. And the SOC audit period is also uh, or is in aligned with your audit period. Generally, what happens is SOC audit is conducted 1st January okay, to 31st December. And our financials are being prepared April to March. Okay, guys. So you need to make sure that the SOC audit, the period of a SOC audit is in align with your financial year. Okay, your SOC audit period is in align with the financial year. If the SOC audit period is 1st January to 31st December, maybe you can uh, ask for a bridge letter. What is a bridge letter? And all those terminologies are covered in that video, guys. So I will provide you a link of a SOC in my comment section. Please check out that video. That video will give you a decent idea. So here, what is the final answer that a statutory auditor can rely on a SOC, SOC to report only if SOC to report includes a para that auditor have uh, checked the compliance of audit trail as per companies at 2013 and it covers the period of companies reporting April to March. Okay, guys. So this you need to do here. Next question is what? Reporting on the audit trail should be done based on each and every changes made by the company or reporting should be done on a materiality concern. So guys here, like uh, suppose sometime what the uh, auditee will say that uh, they have modified one transaction. Suppose I will give you one example here for a tally. Earlier in a tally, there was a feature where you can delete the transaction or where you can modify the transaction. However, tally was not providing you a details that what transactions have been modified. So it was not providing those logs in the previous version of tally. Now in the new version of tally, entire things are there, new version of tally. You can see what transaction has been modified, what amount has been modified, who have modified. So suppose if audit is telling you that we have moved to new version of tally in the month of June 2023. See the requirement was applicable from what date? 1st April 2023. Audit has moved on the new tally June 2023, so there is a gap, April, May or June, uh, almost three months gap is there. Now, if Audity will tell you that in this three months, we have not done any major changes. So from the materiality perspective, there is no major changes. And uh, uh, like, you know, from the June on onwards, all the transactions are getting logged. No need to modify a report. So it is very clearly mentioned in FAQ, even if there is a uh, uh, no impact materiality wise, still you need to modify your report. Okay. 
reporting on audit trail is an independent of any adverse finding regarding the financial statement okay if audit trail is required by rule 31 of companies act uh, rules 2014 is not maintained auditor need to appropriately modify the report so you will not go into the concept of materiality that in april to june only like you know a transaction of rupees 1 lakh was modified so there is no impact on a financial statement so from the materiality perspective uh, uh, everything is complied no even if uh, there is a you know small non compliance you need to highlight that non compliance in your audit report okay so this is this question next question is if software is not able to retain an edit log because of software limitation what will be the reporting uh, uh, on an audit trail sometime what will happen like here we as an auditor we also need to check whether those logs are being retained as per the requirement or not so requirement here is what you need to maintain and you need to retain the logs for the eight years so suppose if company is saying that boss uh, the erp application which i am using that erp application doesn't have any feature to retain the log in that case what will you do if they don't have a feature you just report that boss this is a non-compliance to rule 11g and you modify your audit report okay so irrespective of the fact whether the application has a feature or application doesn't have a feature we'll do our reporting independently and we'll modify our report okay now next question is there a requirement of an auditor to report about the effective date of audit trail implementation in the company okay so guys effective date of audit trail implementation is what audit is what first april 2023 okay first as an auditor we need to check the compliances from first april 2023 only now so if the audit trail is not enabled for the reporting financial year or if it is not operated throughout the year we just need to modify our report so there is no requirement as such where we will write the effective date of audit trail implementation. Okay. There is no requirement, but as an auditor, we will just check that whatever financial year which we are auditing, whether in that financial year, the audit trail feature was enabled or not. We just need to check our financial year, reporting financial year. Okay. No need to comment on the date of implementation, whether it is implemented since 2010, 2012, it doesn't matter. Whether it is applicable from this date or not, this is what you need to check and this is what you need to comment. Next question. Whether the NBFCs and banks are covered under audit trail requirement? Yes, they are also covered guys. Okay. There is no, uh, like, you know, there is no exemption given to the banks or NBFCs. Everybody is uh, covered in uh, uh, this uh, section. So this is the question. Now let's move to the next question. Uh, are auditor required to comment on the details of audit trail log guys? So like, you know, details of audit trail means what? Like whether as an auditor, you need to comment that what, what, what is being captured? Like for example, date, amount, uh, transaction detail, particular or time. Like whether you need to report all this in your audit report, this is what the FAQ is. So guys, auditor need not to write the details of audit trail in the report okay you need not to provide those detail in in your audit report there is no requirement of uh, for an auditor to comment on the details of audit trail you just need to check whether that audit trail was operated throughout the year or not first thing second thing whether the audit trail feature was tampered with or not and whether the trail has been preserved as per the statutory requirement or not so we need to comment on this aspect. We need not to comment on the details of audit trail. Okay. Next question. Is an audit trail required to be enabled at a database level even if access to database in ERP is restricted only to one user? So sometime what will happen? The company will say that there is a one person who is called as a database administrator. And company will say that there is a only one person who can do the changes into a database and uh, that th this is the reason that audit trail feature is not enabled on the database level. now this is not a right justification even though there is a one user or even though there is a one database administrator audit trail feature needs to be enabled at a database level also okay whether there is one dba whether there is two da dba irrespective of the fact 
the log needs to be enabled at a database level as well so that if there is any person who is doing a backend changes those backend changes should be logged in the audit trail table okay guys this is this question now next question do auditor need to do the testing of erp of a company or auditor can simply rely on the representation of the management guys obviously you will not rely on the management representation as per this rule 11 you need to take a separate MRL from the management management responsibility letter. So obviously you will not rely blind, blindly on the MRL. <coughs> As an auditor, you need to do the testing of an ERP application to check whether the audit rail feature was enabled, not enabled, or uh, uh, some other requirement as per the rule 11G. You need to do your independent testing, guys. Okay. <coughs> Next question. In case of <coughs> logs of entire chain of change are not maintained they are doing any changes and logs are not maintained for the entire change however software maintains only logs of a latest changes will this be adequate or absence of log of an entire change will result into a modified section so sometime what will happen suppose this is your transaction transaction was amounting rupees thousand so I have changed this transaction 900, then again I change it to 850, then uh, again someone have changed it to a 800. Now sometime what will happen, that system will only capture the last change. Okay, current is 800, previous, uh, previous to this it was 850. This two change system will not capture. If this is the case, you need to modify your record. Because the requirement is what all the changes, not the last changes, all the changes needs to be maintained in the audit trail. So if those tra two transactions are not uh, logged, then you need to modify your report here. Okay, guys, you need to modify the report. Clear? Next question. Uh, is the audit trail recorded at a backend on a server or cloud maintained outside India? Then whether the audit trail is also required to remain accessible in India all the time, sometime what will happen that there are a lot of companies and their holding companies are there in the foreign and their data is also being maintained in the foreign server. So in that case, what is the requirement that whatever audit logs are there, those audit logs should be remain accessible in India all the time. So if the logs are being maintained in a, a server outside India, you need to make sure that the backup of those servers are available in India and the audit trail logs are accessible in India all the time. Okay. So you need to ask this to the company and accordingly need to check the compliance. Okay. Next question. Where the independent auditors report of a service organization that includes the maintenance of audit trail is not co-terminals -ter with the company's financial year. So as I told you guys, uh, whenever you will refer a SOC report, SOC report is generally uh, for the period Jan to December and your financial year is what? April to March, correct? So now in this case scenario, how should auditor of a company consider the SOC 2 uh, report for their reporting under Rule 11G? So guys, uh, you need to ask a company a bridge letter. As I told you that uh, company will provide you a bridge letter for the period of Jan to March and this is how you will ensure that okay, the audit trail feature was enabled for the entire year. If company is not providing your bridge letter, then you can modify your report because uh, this will not provide you assurance that the audit trail was enabled, audit trail feature was enabled for throughout the financial year. Okay, guys. <clears throat> Next question. Will the maintaining a backup of ERP in server situated in India is sufficient to be complied with the requirement of audit trail? Okay. Some, sometime what will happen if company will say that we are maintaining a backup of ERP server and it is situated in India. See, backup is a different thing and the audit trail is a different thing. If companies are maintaining a backup, it doesn't mean that they are complying with the audit trail requirement. Audit trail is different and backup is different. So even though they are maintaining a backup, you need to check whether the audit trail is there or not. Okay, guys. So here you need to verify the compliances of an audit trail. Okay. <clears throat> then next point is what whether a single report showing uh, all or edit done during the year containing all the details as required is sufficient for the audit purpose 
suppose if there is an ERP application and it is providing you a single report showing all the edit done, whatever edits that is being done, all the transaction which is edit, uh, edited by a user if they are providing uh, that report. So will that report be sufficient or not? So guys, as an auditor in this scenario, you need to assess that report. Okay. If the ERP application is producing a single report, okay, then uh, uh, auditor is able to obtain a sufficient and appropriate audit evidence to support their reporting on audit trail. Then it may suffice the purpose because here the requirement is what? Audit trail feature needs to be enabled if there is any edit of transaction and that transaction should capture who have done the changes, what changes are done and when the changes are done, correct? So those details, if those details are available in a single report, I have a no issue. For me, it will be taken as a compliance only. Okay. If there is a single report, as an auditor, make sure uh, collect the sufficient and appropriate audit evidence and then accordingly comply the same. Okay. Uh, now, next point. If company's ERP accounting software is not generating an edit log, except for generating a data-wise voucher listing, whether the voucher listing can be considered as an audit trail considering the substance over the form. So, so what is this question? Suppose if we are using an ERP accounting software, that software is not generating the edit log except for generating the date-wise voucher listing. So it is just providing a date-wise voucher listing. This is the 1st April. This is what the transaction is passed. 2nd April, what tra transaction, what voucher has been passed. Okay. So if in this case, whether the audit trail requirement will be satisfied or not. So as I told you guys, audit trail should capture everything. What detail was added or modified? What fields, fields were modified? And who have modified it? Okay. Who have modified it? So a voucher listing may not usually provide this information, whether voucher was changed, how many times it was changed, what changed were made. So, merely a voucher listing will not be considered as an audit trail if somebody is providing you the voucher listing. So, that voucher listing you, you cannot consider as an audit trail requirement. You need to check whether that voucher listing is uh, including all this aspect or not. If it is not including this aspect, you need to modify your audit report. Okay. Next question. If an accounting software provides an error log, and this error log is editable. See, error log is different thing. Okay, error log is what? Suppose if there is any error in any module or in any application for that log would be generated. So, error log will not satisfy the requirement of an audit trail. Are you getting my point? If some client is telling you that all the error logs are being captured, so it will not satisfy the requirement of audit trail for Audit trail requirement, you need to make sure that the transactions, whatever transactions that has an impact on the financial statement, those transactions are getting logged. Okay. <clears throat> Next question. Audit trail feature is not operated during the audit reporting period. Then how will you write the modified opinion in your audit report? So this is the illustration of the same. You can read the same or maybe you can take a screenshot here. This is how you will report the same. Uh, this is how you will modify your audit. Okay. Next question. Whether the books of account maintained in accounting software would, would include the following master data, purchase order, sales order, records of PP and use of spreadsheet. Okay, guys. So suppose uh, companies are using a different, different application to maintain their purchase order, sales order, to maintain their master record, to maintain their PPB, PP, uh, property plan equipment and Sometimes they are using a spreadsheet. So whether the requirement of audit trail is applicable in those this software or not. So this is being discussed here. Okay. <clears throat> now, usually what will happen? Accounting software will include the details of payment made to the vendor. And that accounting software will not have a complete details of a transaction record. And a reference to related master record will be necessary in that, that case. Correct. So vendor master if suppose if you are using any vendor master that vendor master will be considered as a part of books of account because in your erp application the complete details of transaction records are not maintained and the reference is necessary in that case what will happen 
your vendor master will be treated as a books of account and you need to make sure that the audit trail feature is enabled in the vendor master. Now second, purchase order or sales order. Now purchase order, in case of purchase order, goods received entry or vendor invoice recording entry will be captured in the liability to be recorded in a books of account. Purchase order contracts are used by a company as a control governance mechanism to establish a contractual obligation. Where the terms of such purchase are agreed at the time of receipt or at the time of booking of invoice. Thus, depending upon a likely interface input uh, to the books of account, one may conclude that it will be part of accounting software, require an audit will feature. Okay. And the above assessment would also hold good for the sales order or a price master. Thus, depending on the circumstances may apply. Auditor would need to exercise their judgment in this regard. Now, what, what is this point, guys? Sometime what will happen, you are maintaining a purchase order in a separate uh, ERP application. And whatever terms of those purchase orders are there, those terms are being also included in that ERP application. So now you need to see whether those uh, changes to those terms are being captured in the main ERP application or whether those are being captured in the uh, a separate ERP application or separate uh, uh, application. Accordingly, you need to exercise your judgment here and accordingly you need to tell them whether the audit will feature will be required in the uh, application or not required. If everything is being captured in your main ERP application, the purchase order, entire purchase order details along with the terms and condition, then I would say that uh, uh, audit will requirement would not be applicable to the uh, uh, PO listing or sales uh, order listing application. If entire details are not being captured in main ERP application, then the requirement would be applicable for the respective application. The same applies with the PPE as well. Suppose if you are maintaining a details of your property plant equipment in a separate uh, <coughs> application. Okay. Now, suppose from that application, if there is a direct feed, okay. If there is a direct feed to the accounting software, suppose uh, uh, automatically entries are being passed into an accounting software from the PPE application or from the uh, application where you're maintaining this detail. In that case, audit trail requirement would be applicable because this is an automated process. Okay. <clears throat> the same goes with the spreadsheet as well. Now we are using an Excel sheet a lot in preparing a financial statement. Correct. So suppose if you are using an Excel sheet and if that Excel sheet provides a direct and auto feed to accounting software, then that will be treated as a books of account and you need to make sure that the audit trail feature is enabled in the spreadsheet. If it is not providing your direct feed, then the requirement of audit trail would not be applicable. Okay, guys. So these are the <coughs> FAQs that we had discussed. So this is all for our today's video, guys. Now, if you have any query, any doubt, you can... Uh, Ask me in the comment section. That is all for my today's video. In my next video, definitely I will be discussing about a audit trail feature in an SAP application. That is all for our today's video. See you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye and take care. Thank you so much.